Welcome back again, our space fam. I hope I'm not sounding like I'm struggling too much after last night's big game. Go Bucks! That's right, Florida native. But I'm excited to get back to some our space stories just for you guys. First up, ex-fiance, two-month affair with a coworker, together eight years, engaged one and a half years. D-Day was a month ago, doing better, but it still sucks. My now ex-fiance female 29, and I, male 29, met in 2012 while going to college together. Two years later, she moved in with me and we're both still in college at this point. In 2017, I started grad school and was pretty busy most of the time. She played on co-ed teams all the time and played multiple sports. She started constantly playing sports with a male friend and I didn't think anything of it. She started to become distant and acting out of character. My gut was telling me something else was going on, so I went through her phone while she was asleep and found screenshots that she took of conversations between her and this guy. The actual messages were deleted, but she took screenshots of bits of it for some strange reason. I guess to look back on them? At this point, she was having an emotional affair with this person, and I called her out on it. She was super remorseful, and I shamelessly took her back after two weeks of thinking it over. She ended things immediately with the affair partner, and never hesitated to communicate and work on herself and our relationship. The thought was always there in my mind of what she did but she hadn't done anything after this to make me question our relationship. We got engaged in September of 2019, the wedding planned for May 2020, which got delayed and eventually canceled in October of 2020 due to COVID. And because we were just going to do something small, October of 2020, she starts working late randomly, staying out with girlfriends. She changes all her passwords and her phone is attached to her hip. I asked for the password and she gives it. So I thought none the wiser. But a couple days later, the password is different. She starts doing things totally out of character that throw immediate red flags to the first time she cheated in 2017. I confronted her twice, at the end of October and the end of November, asking what is going on, or am I being insecure? She lies to my face and says nothing is wrong, that she can't wait to marry me soon. My gut is still telling me she is hiding something. I eventually get into her laptop, and that's where I see screenshots. Thank Google Photos of conversations she's having with a coworker, Totally different person than the first time, if that wasn't clear. I check her location history, which is something I have never did before. On her late work nights and girls nights, she's at some house 20 minutes from her work. My heart dropped, and that's when everything clicked and her behavior made sense. That day when I found out, she said she had to work late again. So I sent her a picture of what I found, and she came home immediately. We argued, talked, and I told her to leave. She admitted to the physical affair. She left for the weekend to her parents. Over the weekend, I thought that maybe we could work it out again. We did it once, we can do it again. I talked to her parents, who were divorced due to her dad's affair. I talked to her sister, who cheated on her now husband, and they worked things out and have two kids. Her sister told me that all of my ex-fiance's relationships have ended because she cheats. Of course, no one was going to tell me this while dating, but would have been nice to know after the first time she cheated. She came back on Monday and we talked. I laid out my terms and she didn't agree. She wanted terms for me too. She said that it would hurt to end that friendship with the affair partner. That working together and having lunch every day brought them closer together over the years she's been working there. That she had to do what she had to do to be happy. That she told the affair partner that she loved him. That affair partner listened and talks to her. That the affair partner would let her have everything I wouldn't. Her strongest example of this is a dog. A freaking dog. We live in an apartment and both work and aren't home for 12 hours. I was not going to crate a dog for 12 hours. So I told her once we have a backyard, she can have whatever dog she wanted. Like, seriously? From the grapevine, I heard the affair partner already had an engagement ring for her. She was so deep in the fog and even today. I think she is. She was so smug and rude about it. Not true remorse like the first time. It hurt to see her act this way. I thought I knew her. It just hurts. It just sucks. I thought I knew what my future was going to be. Things were planned and timelines started. And now I'm just lost. I take it day by day. It sucks being alone after having someone there for eight years. I think that's the hardest thing for me, being alone. I made her my priority, even above myself. And now I don't know what to do with myself. All the memories, all the things, all the support, All the adventures just wasted because she couldn't talk to me. She moved out 
and we haven't had contact for about two to three weeks now. Every day is getting easier, but the waves still come, though not as strong. I've blocked her where needed, got tested, and am redecorating my apartment. I know her cheating isn't my fault, but there are always things I could have worked on to better myself, and perhaps the relationship could have gone differently. But it's over now, and that's all that matters. I've picked up mountain biking, and am taking my golf game more seriously since I can't play hockey. I have a great support group of friends and family. I'm going to use the time during shutdown to reflect and move on and better myself so once a vaccine is available widespread, I can be ready to date again. It still just sucks. It is what it is. Time for our community reply from SIG1. There is nothing you can work with. She cheated once and you gave her a second chance and she did it again and left you. Her dad is a cheater, her sister is a cheater, she is a cheater, and apparently has been since she started dating. You can't do anything when she doesn't want to change, and even if she wants to change, it will be a long and arduous road with no guarantees of success. You don't want to go down that path only to find out six to ten years down the road that she can't change. Sever all ties with her, go completely no contact, and work on yourself so you can move on. Whether she doesn't love you anymore or she is easily distracted by shiny things, soon enough, her knight in shining armor will quickly turn into an idiot wrapped in tinfoil and she will backtrack and try to get back with you. Cheat on him or he will turn controlling because he obviously can't trust her. Whatever made it okay in her mind for her to cheat on you is still there. It didn't go away. With her gone, you have removed a cancer from your life. She being the cancer brought it into her new relationship and soon enough it will end as well. Hopefully, when she comes around to ask for a second chance, you will have moved on and be with someone worth being with and you can slam the door in her face. The last thing you want is to give her a third chance and marry her, buy a house, and have kids, and for this to happen five, six, or 10 years down the line. You don't wanna spend your life wondering if she isn't out with her friends, or if she is out screwing some guy, if she is working overtime, or if she is cheating. You don't wanna be the relationship police, especially since she has demonstrated very clearly that she has not learned from any relationship before you and from cheating on you, so it's almost guaranteed that she will do this again, whether to you or someone else. In her mind, you are waiting at home for her as plan B. Work on yourself so that when her relationship inevitably implodes, and it will implode, make sure you are strong enough to push her away. The OP thinks, I have a feeling her sister is telling her the story about it working out later, so it won't surprise me if she does come back. But she won't get a third chance with me. I've told all my family and friends, so that I won't go back. I don't want to hear them say, I told you so, when it fails again. The more people I tell, the less it hurts, and the sooner I can move on. All right, moving on to our next story. Seems like it's gonna have a interesting perspective. It's called, A View From The Other Side. To those who are reading these posts, trying to find every way you'd get caught while having an affair, it's never going to work out in your favor. I at one time was the affair partner. I even left my wife and two children because I reconnected with the one that got away. I'm in no way at all proud of myself or anything I did during that time. I destroyed my family and hurt my children in ways that I can't understand. This is meant to be a warning for those who aren't happy with their current relationship, and it's my hope that at least one person can benefit from my mistakes. I am in no way seeking sympathy or understanding from anyone, nor am I trying to justify my deplorable actions. I used to serve in the US military, and as a result, I became depressed from a mix of different things because of that service. My first failure was I denied that I was depressed and never sought help. I was released from my service right before I hit my 14 year mark and was forced back into civilian life. I was not prepared for this kind of life after only knowing the military my entire adult life. Again, I denied the effect that things had on me and I fell deeper into depression. I closed off to pretty much everyone in my life and just went through the motions. That is until I got a random message on my birthday from an old flame. At first it was truly innocent catching up and reconnecting with someone who used to be the one. Though slowly, our conversations became more intimate and we confided in each other the way you would if you were in a healthy relationship. After a few months of this, I admitted that she was my first love and that I always wondered what our lives would be like if we never broke up. Our conversations started to become more and more like a couple and honestly, if there wasn't an 800 mile distance, I'm sure it would have been a physical affair also. After a few more months, I had checked out completely when I was home. I was always on my phone, I wouldn't spend any time with my ex or my kids. I recognized that I was having an emotional affair 
and I hated the thought that I was a cheater. So instead of admitting what I was doing, I decided that I had to leave my then wife. And one day after work, I came home and started packing. I just said to my ex that I didn't love her anymore and I had to leave. No explanation, no sympathy for what I was doing, and no consideration for what I was doing to three people who were supposed to be everything to me. Eventually, I started taking trips to see her and was making plans to move out there so we could start our new lives. I moved out to where she lived and spent every moment I could with her, taking the time she could have been spending with her family. Yes, she was married and had her own children. Eventually, I met her kids. After she had spent time with them, convincing them that I was better than their actual dad. Soon, we were all taking day trips together and I was taking over the role of the father figure. After close to a year, I had a few events happen that threatened to leave me homeless for a while. So I moved in with my affair partner and her family. Her husband had a job that kept him away for long periods of time. Dreams come true, right? I was pretty much taking over. During this time, I was expecting her to finally leave her husband for me. It never happened. During this time, I finally started to see just how toxic an affair can be and is. I got to my lowest point during this time. I blamed everyone except myself for all my problems and was close to just ending everything. Luckily enough, it was about this time that a friend of mine reached out just to see how I've been. I admitted everything to them, even how close I was to suicide. She eventually convinced me that I was completely in the wrong for everything and the first thing I had to do was end everything with my affair partner. I left my job, which was great, and again moved back to my hometown. It's been a couple years since then, and I'm still dealing with all the chaos my selfishness has caused, not only to my children and ex, but also to my fair partner's family. If you aren't happy in your relationship, please don't go looking for happiness anywhere but inside yourself. Nothing good can ever come from cheating. Any pleasure or joy you may find is very temporary and isn't real. And even if you end up being together with your fair partner, how can you ever have trust? How can they ever trust you? Trust is a cornerstone to any relationship, and without it, you're never going to be happy. I'll get off my soapbox now. Man, what an interesting perspective. Let's see how Black2108 responds from the community. Wow, I mean really wow. You really blew up your life and traumatized your children for nothing. Well, not totally for nothing. For a lying, conniving, two-faced garbage human being. Your kids are, were teenagers and preteens, so they are definitely aware that their dad abandoned them to be a father to his side chick's kids. You ditched your family and made a new family like they meant absolutely nothing to you. Also, you were underhandedly trying to take your affair partner's kids away from their dad. This man had literally done nothing to you to deserve another man trying to raise his kids while he was trying to make a living for his family. Thank God for your wife who was there to pick up the pieces of the broken hearts and self-esteem of your poor children. Like, this could have all been worked out before the affair with some communication and some therapy. And if that avenue didn't work, you could have left the relationship, but never your kids. Below is a subreddit of where people like you go get the support for making horrible life choices. I would suggest maybe you start lurking over there to see how other people have tried to rebuild their lives. Hopefully, one day your kids will heal enough to trust you again to let you back into their lives. More importantly, I hope you have really changed your moral compass, your rationality, and your common decency. I wish you well. And despite all that, I'd still like to thank you for your service. But please, do get some help.